first approach to mount rainier 1833 by william fraser tolmy introduced by edmund s meany this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org dr william fraser tolmy was a medical officer in the service of the hudson's bay company he was born at inverness scotland on february third eighteen twelve and died at victoria british columbia on december eighth eighteen eighty eight he was educated at glasgow and when twenty years of age he joined the hudson's bay company in eighteen thirty three he was located at nisqually house puget sound it was then that he made his trip to the mountain he later served at other posts in the pacific northwest and was raised to the rank of chief factor in eighteen fifty six he was then placed on the board of management of the great company in eighteen sixty he retired from the service in eighteen fifty he was married to jane eldest daughter of chief factor john work their descendants still live at victoria british columbia they especially the son john w tolmy have compared this reproduction from dr tolmy's diary with the original manuscript to ensure accuracy so far as is now known this is the first record of a white man's close approach to mount rainier it is pleasant to note that the new map of mount rainier national park published by the united states geological survey shows the peak he climbed and the creek flowing near it bearing the name of tolmy introduction by edmund s meany 1916 first approach to the mountain august twenty seventh eighteen thirty three obtained mr heron's consent to make a botanizing excursion to mount rainier for which he is allowed ten days have engaged two horses from a chief living in that quarter who came here to-night and lachale is to be my guide told the indians i am going to mount rainier to gather herbs of which to make medicine part of which is to be sent to britain and part retained in case intermittent fever should visit us when i will prescribe for the indians august twenty eighth a tremendous thunderstorm occurred last night succeeded by torrents of rain the thunder was very loud and the lightning flashing completely enlightened my apartment have been chatting with mr heron about colonizing whidby's island a project of which he is at present quite full more anon no horses have appeared understand that the mountain is four days journey distant the first of which can only be performed on horseback if they do not appear to-morrow i shall start with lachale on foot august twenty ninth prairie eight miles north of home sunset busy making arrangements for journey and while thus occupied the guide arrived with three horses started about three mounted on a strong iron gray my companions disposing of themselves on the other two horses except one who walked we were six in number i have engaged lachale for a blanket and his nephew lashima for ammunition to accompany me and nukalkut a puallup whom i took for a native of mount rainier with two horses to be guide on the mountain after leaving the horse track and quilniash his relative a very active strong fellow has volunteered to accompany me the indians are all in great hopes of killing elk and chevril and lachale has already been selling and promising the grease he is to get it is in great measure the expectation of finding game that urges them to undertake the journey cantered slowly along the prairie and are now at the residence of nukalkut's father under the shade of a lofty pine in a grassy amphitheatre beautifully interspersed and surrounded with oaks and through the gaps in the circle we see the broad plain extending southward to nisqually 
in a hollow immediately behind is a small lake whose surface is almost one sheet of water lilies about to flower have supped on salile and at dusk shall turn in august thirtieth sandy beach of puyallup river slept ill last night and as i dozed in the morning was aroused by a stroke across the thigh from a large decayed branch which fell from the pine overshadowing us a drizzling rain fell during most of the night got up about dawn and finding thigh stiff and painful thought a stop put to the journey but after moving about it felt easier started about sunrise i mounted on a spirited brown mare the rest on passable animals except knucklecut who bestrode a foal made a northeasterly course through prairie breakfasted at a small marsh on bread salile dried cockles and a small piece of chevriel saved from the last night's repast of my companions for i cannot call them attendants the points of wood now become broader and the intervening plain degenerated into prairians stopped about one p m at the abode of three tecatat families who met us rank and file at the door to shake hands their sheds were made of bark resting on a horizontal pole supported at each end by tripods and showed an abundance of elk's flesh dried within two kettles were filled with this and after smoking my indians made a savage repast on the meat and bullion Lachalet saying it was the Indian custom to eat a great deal at once and afterwards abstain for a time. He, however, has twice eaten since. Traded some dried meat for four balls and three rings, and mounting rode off in the midst of a heavy shower. Ascended and descended at different times several steep banks and passed through dense and tangled thickets occasionally coming on a prairion the soil throughout was of the same nature as that of nisqually after descending a very steep bank came to the puyallup lashima carried the baggage across on his head rode to the opposite side through a rich alluvial plain three or four miles in length and three-fourths to one in breadth it is covered with fern about eight feet high in some parts passed through woods and crossed river several times about seven p m dismounted and the horses and accoutrements were left in a wood at the river's brink started now on foot for a house knucklecut knew and after traversing woods and twice crossing the torrents on the unsteady footing of a log arrived at the house which was a deserted one and encamped on the dry part of a river's bed along which our course lies to-morrow the puyallup flows rapidly and is about ten or twelve yards broad its banks are high and covered with lofty cedars and pines the water is of a dirty white color being impregnated by white clay lachele has to-night been trying to persuade me from going to the snow on the mountain august thirty first slept well and in the morning two salmon were caught on which we are to breakfast before starting after breakfast quilliliash stuck the gills and sound of the fish on a spit which stood before the fire so that the next comer might know that salmon could be obtained there having travelled nearly the whole day through a wood of cedar and pine surface very uneven and after ascending the bed of river a couple of miles are now encamped about ten yards from its margin in the wood find myself very inferior to my companions in the power of enduring fatigue their pace is a smart trot which soon obliges me to rest the waters of the puyallup are still of the same color can see a short distance up two lofty hills covered with wood evening cloudy and rainy showery all day sunday september first bank of puyallup river it has rained all night and is now six a m 
pouring down are a good deal sheltered by the trees my companions are all snoozing shall presently arouse them and hold a council of war the prospect is very discouraging our provisions will be expended to-day and Lachale said he thought the river would be too high to be fordable in either direction had dried meat boiled in a cedar bark kettle for breakfast i got rigged out in green blanket without trousers in indian style and trudged on through the wood afterward exchanged blanket with lachale for ovary's capu which has been on almost every indian at nisqually however i found it more convenient than the blanket our course lay up the river which we crossed frequently the bed is clayey in most parts saw the saw-bill duck once or twice riding down on a log and fired twice unsuccessfully have been flanked on both sides with high pine-clad hills for some time a short distance above encampment snow can be seen it having rained almost incessantly have encamped under shelving bank which has been undermined by the river immense stones only held in situ by dried roots form the roof and the floor is very rugged have supped on berries which when heated with stones and kettle taste like lozenges propose to-morrow to ascend one of the snowy peaks above september second summit of a snowy peak immediately under rainier passed a very uncomfortable night in our troglodytic mansion ascended the river for three miles to where it was shut in by amphitheatre of mountains and could be seen bounding over a lofty precipice above ascended that which showed most snow our track lay at first through a dense wood of pine but we afterwards emerged into an exuberantly verdant gully closed on each side by lofty precipices followed fully to near the summit and found excellent berries in abundance it contained very few alpine plants afterwards came to a grassy mound where the sight of several decayed trees induced us to encamp after tea i set out with lachale and knucklecut for the summit which was ankle deep in snow for one fourth mile downwards the summit terminated in abrupt precipice directed northwards and bearing northeast from mount rainier the adjoining peak the mists were at times very dense but a puff of southwest wind occasionally dispelled them on the south side of puyallup is a range of snow-dappled mountains and they as well as that on the north side terminate in mount rainier a short distance to east collected a vasculum of plants at the snow and having examined and packed them shall turn in thermometer at base fifty four degrees at summit of ascent forty seven degrees september third woody islet on puyallup it rained heavily during night but about dawn the wind shifted to the northeast dispersed the clouds and frost set in lay shivering all night and roused my swarthy companions twice to rekindle the fire at sunrise accompanied by quillaliash went to the summit and found the temperature of the air thirty three degrees the snow was spangled and sparkled brightly in the bright sunshine it was crisp and only yielded a couple of inches to the pressure of foot in walking mount rainier appeared surpassingly splendid and magnificent it bore from the peak on which i stood south southeast and was separated from it only by a narrow glen whose sides however were formed by inaccessible precipices got all my bearings more correctly to-day the atmosphere being clear and every object distinctly perceived the river flows at first in a northerly direction from the mountain the snow on the summit of the mountain adjoining rainier on western side of puyallup is continuous with that of latter and thus the southwestern aspect of rainier seemed the most accessible 
by ascending the first mountain through a gully in its northern side you reach the eternal snow of rainier and for a long distance afterwards the ascent is very gradual but then it becomes abrupt from the sugar-loaf form assumed by the mountain its eastern side is steep on its northern aspect a few glaciers were seen on the conical portion below that the mountain is composed of bare rock apparently volcanic which about fifty yards in breadth reaches from the snow to the valley beneath and is bounded on each side by bold bluff crags scantily covered with stunted pines its surface is generally smooth but here and there raised into small points or knobs or arrowed with short and narrow longitudinal lines in which snow lay from the snow on western border the puyallup arose and in its course down this rock slope was fenced into the eastward by a regular elevation of the rock in the form of a wall or dike which at the distance i viewed it at seemed about four feet high and four hundred yards in length two large pyramids of rock arose from the gentle acclivity at southwest extremity of mountain and around each the drifting snow had accumulated in large quantity forming a basin apparently of great depth here i also perceived peeking from their snowy covering two lines of dike similar to that already mentioned september fourth am tonight encamped on a small eminence near the commencement of prairie had a tedious walk through the wood bordering puyallup but accomplished it in much shorter time than formerly evening fine september fifth nisqually reached tekatat camp in the forenoon and regaled on boiled elk and shallion pushed on ahead with lachalet and quililiash and arrived here in the evening where all is well end of first approach to mount rainier eighteen thirty three by william fraser told me read by sue anderson